channel we got going on here called the Dapper Dividends YouTube channel. I know. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Thank you again for uh, spending a little bit of your, your Sunday evening with me here. Our Sunday communion of sorts, I guess. Fresh out from, uh, I got a little bit of the uh, Irish whiskey, so cheers. Now, this has a little bit of a story to it. Not bad. It's from Costco, and it is the Kirkland. You hear me stutter? I wanted to say it was from Kirkland, but no, it's from Costco, and it is the Kirkland brand. So that is uh, four years aged Irish whiskey from Costco. What did we get there? We bought a $4.99 roasted chicken and some Irish whiskey. I know. We're living the high life out there at... Uh, the Costco, ticker C-O-S-T, just a fantastic company. I know we talked about it with the, that they were on the Acquired podcast. They did a bit about them. If you haven't checked out the Acquired podcast, it's like three and a half hours long, all about Costco, man. You've got to, you got to check it out. So, um, oh, look at this. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan's in the house. What's up, man? Dueling dividends. Yeah, we should plan that out better. So we'll, we'll do something. We'll get on, um. I left my hat on all day. Look at that. The uh, maybe I'll leave it on. We're we're frugal around here, and that's how we um, invest more. We pass the savings on to you guys. So uh, I cut my own hair, and I had messed it up over the years growing it out on the top. Um, anyway, without further ado, I want to say again thanks to all you people up here, around there, down there, over there in Canada around the world. I think I'm here in my eye or something. Um, yeah, this is going to be a really quick and easy one. It's kind of fun. Uh, I, you guys probably have seen me tweet, you know, I love visual capitalist. They put out maybe twice a week. They do these really beautiful charts and they put a lot of time into them. So they do research. They put these charts into your email box. So in the link below, I have a sign up link for that. It's free. For visual capitalists, you'll get, come on, you'll get a couple uh, every week. And this one I thought was really cool and it really, uh, really spoke to me. So let's, uh, I'm going to jump into that. I want to hear what you guys have been buying, what you guys have been doing. You know, hey, if you're reading the charts, if you're a bunch of chartists out there and you think that you can predict the future reading charts, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know um, just your thoughts, man. Push back on anything and, and lady, I say man as a whole, like I include everybody in there. I don't know if that's not woke or gender inclusive or whatever. Hey, I'm just a welder on my way to a million dollars net worth. Well on our way. We're we're getting there. So just sharing my thoughts. I love talking to you guys. I love seeing everybody. I love everything you share. Makes us stronger, smarter as a community. So uh, this should go without saying, don't take anything I say as gospel. These are just my thoughts and opinions, which could be wrong. And if you buy something because I'm buying it and it turns out to be a pile of steaming, you know what? That's on you. That's not on me. So um, yeah, anyway, I will... Uh, do my best, by the way, to stay caught up with this one. So here we go. Buckle in. Oh, by the way, yeah. Shop smart. Shop S smart. You got that? From the one and only one of my, I don't know how to, I don't know how to pop the shirts like the kids do, even though I got the backward hat on. Maybe we won't. Um, <laughs> uh, it's from Evil Dead. I love horror movies and it's from, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's not what you came here for, but let's get into it now that we've been on for four, four minutes from Visual Capitalist. I need to do that. Come on, buddy. Get on there. Get on up to get on there. All right, let's see. So let me make this a little bigger. There we go. Hold on, hold the phone. I need to put myself down here so you can get more real estate and this can be a little bit bigger for you. So here we go. This is from, again, Visual Capitalist. How long does it take to double your money? Now, if you're not familiar, all that this is is the rule of 72. Again, the link for this is in the description below. I'd say check it out. You know, print it out, stare at it. Put it above your little Betty Bye. When you're falling asleep, you can look at it and daydream about doubling your money. But the rule of 72, why does it work? I don't know the mechanics why it works. It just does work. So you take the 
annual rate of whatever your return, in this case, they just figured 10% divide, I'm sorry, <laughs> we messed it up already. You divide 72 by whatever your annual rate of return that you expect to get or want to get is, and that will tell you how long it takes to double your money. So if you expect the 10% rate of return, uh, you divide that by 72. I think I said that wrong. Uh, you get 7.2 years. So it's just a quick and approximate way, as they say, to calculate that. So they just ran some numbers, and I think this is really cool, this little chart here. So they gave us the, sorry about that, people, average annual returns from 1928 to 2022. And, of course, three-month T-bill, 3.3%. Real estate, 4.4%. Again, this is going back almost 100 years. The T-bond, 4.9 gold. You know, I used to be in a gold and precious metals. Warren Buffett talked me out of it. We can talk about that if you'd like. Corporate bonds, 7%. And then the S&P 500, including reinvested dividends, 11.5% average annual return from 1928 to 2022. And in that time frame, the S&P 500, so that's the 500 biggest companies in America, has seen double-digit returns almost 60% of the time. So, yeah, I'm not covering up too much here of the real estate. So that's all it is. If you're expecting a 2% rate of return, it'll take you 35 years to double your money. And as we go down, we see that the market, remember, they assume 11.5%. So that's why if you want to be conservative, you can go uh, 10%. Just assume 10%. Yeah, some years it'll be way more, some it'll be way less, but it'll take about seven years to double your money. And I think the thing that you want to think about is uh, every every seven years, you're doubling your money if it's in the S&P 500, or maybe you know some trick to get you know, 20%. Well, hell, if you're doing TSLY and you got it all in that, hey, you know, more power to you. But it's all about how many doubles can you get in your life, I think is where we want to be at. So just a really cool, quick, easy chart that you can see. And there it is. If you get a 20% Average annual return, you're doubling your money every 3.8 years, so about every four years. And, uh, yeah, they just said one more little, um, yeah, their market's in a minute. Really cool, really quick, really fun. Comes right to your inbox, and then they'll – like they had one uh, this week for the beer. Uh, I shared it on Twitter. It was – spoiler alert, China is the biggest beer-drinking country. And then they'll just write it up and they'll usually have little charts that you can uh, interact with and whatnot. And I don't see it over here in their latest, the beer. Yeah, like it's just awesome. Most profitable US companies by sector. I mean, here we go. Well, I wasn't gonna do this one, but we'll click on it. Again, it's just really beautiful charts. So you can either look at the chart, see that it's obviously aptal, <laughs> aptal. We can call them that. Uh, and then if that's too complicated, you just go right down to the chart. Really good, really easy stuff. And uh, that's it. So what do you think of the rule of 72? Uh, do you already subscribe to visualcapitalist.com's e emails and all that jazz? So, so good. I'd like to know what you guys are buying, what you're doing, what you're thinking. You know, hey, any questions here? Pushback. Let's... Uh, Let's hang out. Let's spend a little bit of this Sunday night getting ready for the week ahead. And uh, cheers. Oh, look at this. We got Kevin Burgess in the house. Love it, baby. Love it. All right. So what have you guys been up to? Let's find out. Uh, yeah, my guy. We'll, we'll hop on. Him and I talk quite a bit. Dude, this is awful. Oh, my God. So if <laughs> it's insane. I can't. If you if you know me, I, I usually I cut the sides and I kept going higher and higher and it was starting to look like a mohawk. So I'm growing out the sides and it's just fun. Now you know about me. I wear hats at work, so I wear hats all day long. It's not really a thing until I record a video and hop on here with you. So, yeah, um, it is hard to plan. Usually Friday nights for me are really busy. Uh, I'm getting home from work. I'm eating. I'm exercising like I have so many things going on Friday night. But uh, yes, yes, we will. Baby, I change my shirt at least twice a week. I try to. Costco. <laughs> 
Dude, I, I I don't know who my wife sent it to, but when we paid, that was the only two things we bought was the, the roasted rotisserie chicken for $4.99 and the gigantic bottle of uh, Irish whiskey imported from Ireland for $29.99. That's, uh, yeah, Costco whiskey and chicken. Hey, at least we didn't eat it in the parking lot, right? We brought it home and ate it. I mean, we could have been complete, uh, you know, I don't want to name, I, I'll, you know, we do like Buffett. We criticize by category and we praise by name. So, um, oh, that's funny, dude. Uh, so Shamir, I think you're responding to a comment I had and Hey, I don't know if he pops in, we'll, we'll talk about it. But somebody on that last video I did talked about all the stocks and said like, you know, you can't buy, you got to wait. The market's going to crash. I wouldn't touch bank stocks until after the banking sector you know, it implodes and then I would buy. And I'm like, but what if it doesn't, you know, like uh, the dude was like, or the dude, at, I'm, I don't know. I don't, said, uh, do you do, do you even do technical analysis or do you, and it's like, you know, tell me what the chart says this company's going to do in five years from now. You know, you can't tell that by the chart from what I know. I'm assuming that's North Dakota, Travis, unless you're in Notre Dame, South Bend. I'm going to go with North Dakota there. Ben buying. Ah, no kidding. Best Buy. Uh, they're going ex-dividend this week. That was in the newsletter. One of my stocks going ex-dividend. Again, so I do that a lot. Sign up below in the comments. And uh, nice, SCHD. Yeah, I bought two more shares of SCHD myself. Somebody's wishing uh, on this Sunday. Pat, you're wishing Kevin a God evening. Nice. Uh, Bill, oh, dude, I'd like to know you really. So, you think SCHD is going to go lower then? Yeah, it might. I mean, if it does, I'll buy more, but we just uh, we just don't know. We, we just don't know. Jim, again, I appreciate all the emails. Bought Mondelez MFC, I don't know. Uh, CNQ is that the railroad? I think that might be. <laughs> yeah, oh, this was in the news. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, Smuckers paid a little bit too much for um, who are they bidding? I think they were in a bidding war against Mondelez. And from what I've heard, they've probably, they might've overpaid by like one and a half to $2 billion for hostess for Twinkies. And I, you know, I don't know, man, it's, it's so snack foods. Is America going to get healthier? Is the world going to get healthier? I, you know, I thought they were going to, and that's why we see PepsiCo shifting a lot. So I think they overpaid. And you know what, everyone, let's do some news real quick. I'm almost caught up. I will say Tommy picked up O and ADC. Nice. Agree Realty. Yeah, Realty Income is an interesting one too. I'm at 150 shares in the retirement account. I think I'm going to be done there. I think I'm going to let it ride. Um, you know, I've kind of talked about this with Ryan and Harris is that it's like, 50 billion, they're so big. They're getting so big. And I think they're just looking for ways to, um, they're looking for ways to expand and it's not being that easy, you know? So I don't know. It's, I don't think they're in any danger, but growth is going to be harder to, <laughs> growth is going to be harder to come by for realty income, I believe, as they just get bigger and bigger. And if they make little acquisitions, it's not really going to move the needle that much or be that accretive to the bottom line. So they're kind of stepping out of their comfort zone, like we saw with the Bellagio and looking for these big deals, looking for things to really kind of start driving their growth and moving the needle somewhere. So yeah, exactly. Um, I was going to do the news with you guys. Yeah, you can still pet your gold if you had Right. You can fondle it. You can hold it in your hand. You can pet it. And unfortunately, it doesn't fart out gold dust that you can scoop up and melt down into solid more pieces. Solid more pieces. There you go. There's some Cook County English for you. English. But yeah, it there's no cash flow to gold. It's literally just what somebody wants to pay you for it. And, you know, I'm not talking about derivatives on the miners, but it's... Um, it's not, I don't like it anymore. I used to think I kind of got talked into it, but um, by the one and only Dr. Doom, that's a whole other thing we've talked about. Interesting, Jim, you're going to be buying Raytheon, which has been beaten down, right? And Pfizer tomorrow. 
All right, we're going to do news. I'm almost caught up to you guys. Hey, what's up? What's going on, Jeremiah? Thanks for stopping by again. Buying, oh no, you, dude, you've been buying Medical Properties Trust. Do you think we're at the bottom? Um, do you think they're turning it around? Because I hope it's not a big position. And I I don't know if they'd be in any danger of going out of business, but um, definitely choppy waters for the MPW. Nice. And then you're buying um, Next Era Energy, AEP. I don't remember AEP. It's It'll come to me. And uh, Nike this week. Nice. Oh, Kevin. Nice. Looking at uh, liking. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So I put all my savings in Zim. Yes, Zim. We see. Pay attention, everybody. When you're driving around the uh, the amber waves of grain. Well, I hope you're not driving in the amber waves of grain. Let's stay on the roads. But when you're on those roads, crisscrossing across America. Remember crisscross? Crisscross will make you jump, jump. That was back in my... Anyway, <laughs> um, stay focused is what we want to say. But look for the Zim trailers. It'll say like uh, the Zim Advantage. I don't remember what it says. I took a picture of a Zim trailer. And I think one of you said like, can you check if my dividends are in there? Because they cut the dividends. Yes. All right. ET looking good. We'll do news here. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, I want to 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 to. Nice, Matt. What's going on, Matt? Been buying PBR. I am. I would be nervous about that because do you do you remember what percentage? I don't think it's outright owned by the government, but I think the Brazilian government, the federal government, owns a a controlling stake in the company. I believe so. Um, there's foreign currency risk. And then there's just that foreign government risk. We don't know what they're going to do, right? They could do almost anything. So yeah, that, that one makes me a little bit nervous, but they've been a good performing stock, good performing company. Uh, JR, nice man. You bought some uh, mid-American properties. That's realist, um, the real estate. That is apartment buildings. People are, I think people like the housing market is really dried up. Everyone's locked into these low mortgages, like myself with a stupidly low two and a quarter uh, percent mortgage. And sorry, I get so excited to talk to you guys. I'm like, forget to breathe. So a couple of times to see me, I'm like, you know, it, it just says like, if I pass out, just hang tight. I'll, I'll be back. So um, yeah, I, I think more people are going to be in apartments for longer until uh, more property gets built. What else we got going on here, guys and girls? Come in my welder's mask. Yeah, that's out in the truck, man. That's uh, that's in the truck. Maybe someday it'd be scary. I look like I read the terms and conditions. Cody, come on, man. Come on, man. Which terms and conditions? I'll read terms and conditions. That'd be boring as hell. The good haircut and a bad haircut is 10 days. Well... Uh, yeah, Jim, it's money. I haven't paid for a haircut, probably pushing five years and dude, I love it. It's just, you know, Hey, sometimes it's a little awkward, you know, but I'm living, I'm, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I really am Billy. Hello, Billy. I did not see Cody's world domination video. That could be interesting. All right. All right. We're going to do this news really, really quickly here. Um, let's see. Why is Kevin missed? Kevin, have you not been uploading videos? Just do something, man. Just get it out there. Tell Here, put it this way. You should at least be doing what you've been buying. I mean, at least do that. That's not that difficult, right? BX. Um, what's BX? That's not Blackstone, is it? Craig, tell me what Blackstone is. And let's see what else you people saying. Dude, Twinkies suck, but they never go bad. You know, they have that shelf life of I don't know how long. Oh, that's right. Thank you. See, this is why I love you guys. Um, yeah, it wasn't Mondelez. You're right. It was General Mills. That was the, um, in a little bit of a bidding war for the Twink, for the Twinkies. The Twink. 
The Twinks, I think those are up here on uh, Halstead Street by Wrigley Field in Boys Town. If you, hey, not throwing shade, those are fun, fun places to go to. They play really good music. You know, they're all nice people up there. Um, I'm guessing this is for me. Thank you, Carlos. And yeah, I worried about it being too long, and I was trying to just. Uh, without it being super boring, going too deep, I figured, you know what, if I can just kind of scroll up through Simply Safe on each one that looks interesting, but would need to do more due diligence, then, you know, you guys could pause the video and look at some of the 10 year, because I, I like how they put it. It's just really nice to see the, it's a nice visual representation to see the bar graphs as they're going up or down or up into the right or down into the right, which we hope that's not Doing that, unless it's the shares outstanding, we want to see that going down and to the right. Um, Kevin, yeah, I don't know what happened, man. Good. You know, it's... <laughs> I, that's disgusting, Shamir. Twink cross the bowls. If you're you're basically mashing a Twinkie and uh, Uncrustable, which is like peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the crust, that that, my friend, is just... Yes, time in the market is more important than timing the market. Ken Fisher's quote, and I will add on that, that I had just read in, sorry, my 100 baggers book by uh, Christopher Mayer, I'm slowly going through it again, is that he talked about in order to get those 100 baggers, it's critical to have these two things, time and growth. And dude, there are multiple times that some of these hundred baggers that you had to hold through like 80% drawdowns in the stock price. So that happened with Amazon for one of them. It's just scary to hold. But, you know, if if your thesis is not busted, then that's a great time to buy more, right? Uh, spreading your retail REIT. Okay. Tommy between uh, another agree. Uh, yeah. Agree Realty ADC and triple net triple. NNN. I don't remember their name. I know it's like that. Uh, it's similar to that. I don't remember. Look at this. Do we have another guitar player? Look at that, man. You're buying Hershey's. Long live Hershey, right? I'm not a big chocolate guy. All right, good. Nice to know that some of you are not uh, all kids here that you remember crisscross and make you jump. Uh <laughs> Jim, you guys are nuts with the, uh, I love it. I love it. If Mondelez would have got Twinkies, they would have been filled with Oreo filling. That's Frankenstein stuff, man. You could just do that yourself, right? Just extract it and make your own creation. That might be interesting. That makes my teeth hurt thinking of that. Jeez. I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I, somewhere around high school, the end of high school. Okay, we'll say when I was 21, just to make everybody okay. My my sweet tooth turned into a bit of a ah, that makes it sound bad. An alcohol tooth. No, <laughs> like it makes me sound like a raging alcoholic. Anyway, I'm not uh, following Graham Stefan yet and doing the uh, the no drinking. So, although I only drink on the weekends, so there's that. All right, so let's do some news. And <laughs> Fast Eddie, that was the very first time we've bought, well, it's almost a gallon of whiskey. It's close, but that was the first time we bought whiskey from Costco. And this was literally minutes ago. I just tried it. So I guess a bit of breaking news here on the Dapper Dividends channel that I give my stamp of approval to the Costco uh, Irish whiskey, you know. And good. I'm like, I'm sorry if I'm skipping over some of you. Oh, so he did a video on Blackstone being the world domination. Very interesting. Yeah, I know Blackstone and Black Rock kind of um, came from the same place, right? And Blackstone does like uh, public, publicly traded things. I forget how it goes. Somebody can correct me. I'm not that familiar on it, but I know one of them is, is stayed like private equity uh, kind of like a KKR, something like that, but Black Rock, maybe I don't remember Black Rock. I get I get them confused, and I know somebody called me out in one of the videos. I said I said Black Stone instead of Black Rock, and it was like you're the stupidest person alive. It was Black Rock, and you said Black Stone. I'm like, oh, sorry, 
I'll, I'll try harder next time. Pure, it was a mistake. All right. Uh, Ryan, you're still on, man. Um, so I was just thinking if I should invite you on or not. We're, eh, we're in, you know. All right. I'm going to – new stocks on my radar lately. No, just, just uh, Kroger. I'm thinking about – swapping out i was talking with with you and uh so i'm telling everybody i on kroger i'm up 42 or 43 percent uh kroger albertson's and albertson's fat albertson's i'm up uh 42 or 43 percent and stubbornly i'm holding out on it's only 11 shares but um i'm thinking of selling it this week and just going into Kroger. I think they're going to be good for years to come. I think the merger is going to go through. They dumped those stores, what, like 400 some stores. So they weren't as big, but still, even after the merger, I think they're still going to be number four in market share. So I don't know what they're thinking. They're they're not, you know, I I don't know. A lot of people think they're the only two stores in town and they're just going to create a monopoly, but you know, all right, I'm going to do news for you guys. So Hold that thought. We'll come back to you, Dresh, and we will do some news from the one, the only, Simply Safe Dividends. And let me take a sip of this. There we go. Now you guys can see it. Let me make it bigger. Make it bigger and do it in a southern drawl just because I won't see how many people I can offend. Uh, JM Smucker. Schmuckers, they uh, downgraded them because of the extra debt that they took on. They think it's going to not, the deal's not going to be as accretive to just give them a crap ton more cash flow. So it's, they think it's going to be more of a drag on them. So they downgraded, but they're still safe. Um, they out, they outfreshed their look on Franklin, ticker B E N. Look at that young Ben. Somebody gave him a makeover. And uh, yeah, so 70, safe. I've never looked into them. We're too big. I can't fit it all on the screen now. That's what she said. So a little smaller. There we go. Uh, Philip Morris raised their dividend 2.4%, 5.4% yield. Uh, this, they taught, if I could sum this up as quick as possible, realty income. So from what I understand, four people work at Simply Safe Dividends. And they spend all day just doing this. There's no algorithm that gives these safety scores. It's done by people. So every safety score you see was given by people. And from time to time, they go back, they look through the company and they reaffirm or they adjust up or down like they did with Smuckers. And for uh, Realty Income, they reaffirmed it as safe. But essentially, they said what I what I kind of reiterated, that they're growing they're trying to grow bigger by starting to branch out into spaces they traditionally aren't in, like the gaming. Um, some of them are like vertical farms and um, custom patient based. I think it's called like dental offices and things like that. So they are looking for ways to grow. Cause again, they're so big, but they still think it's safe. And it's just, you got to expect like mid I think mid um, mid to uh, mid to high single digit growth from here going on out, uh, one to two percent, you know, dividend increases uh, annually. I know they do it every quarter, but it's going to be good for income oriented people, and it should hopefully pace inflation. Uh, they reaffirmed Raytheon at seventy safe. They upgraded Stag Industrial from forty five to sixty, so it's at the higher end of the. Uh, safety bucket. I sold them. We had started a position, but the dividend growth is just non-existent. So, I mean, until they start really growing that dividend, um, I don't think I'm going to jump back in the stag, but good company. And uh, we've worked near one of their buildings in Janesville. There you go. Triple N. They refreshed their outlook on triple N. And Chenier, I don't remember if I said that right. I wish I had Mike on. They upgraded them from 43 to 60. What else do we got here? <laughs> Cracker Barrel. They downgraded. Go to old Cracker Barrel because their new CEO, I'll just read it for you. 
Cracker Barrel's new CEO and declining foot traffic raised dividend concerns. So they, and by the way, these are, you know, this will be a nice write up. They'll support that, but you know, we don't have time for that. So you just get to see this. So if you're in Cracker Barrel, might want to do a little of your own due diligence. And, you know, they downgraded slightly Dollar General, uh, which look at that yield is sky high above their five year average. They, uh, yeah, I don't know. Inside this one, they showed that Family Dollar and Walmart have pretty much st still gone up, like flat to going up while uh, Dollar General is taking a nosedive. So they're saying like, it looks like it's a problem that's specific with Dollar General for whatever reason. I didn't go that deep into it, but be careful if you are a Dollar General investor. And at this point, I think we could see them going below a hundred bucks. And then the last one, Ready Capital. I don't know if any of you are invested in Ready Capital, but they done cut their dividend once again by 10%. So that's the second cut and they are a commercial mortgage REIT. So could be some issues in that. And that's what's been uh, going on. Oh, and also Innovative Industrial Properties declared their next dividend. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, they should have given a raise there. So this has me a little bit, a little bit concerned. Uh, I've been hoping to get uh, my cost basis is like a hundred dollars and sixty one cents on like forty three or forty four shares. Let me see. But I've yeah, they give them a, a safety score of forty unsafe. Um, I have where is it forty five shares, and the cost basis is one hundred dollars and one cents per share. So I've been holding out for that hundred bucks. And I think if they don't raise that dividend for a second time, and we have now a frozen dividend, I think it may be time to uh, check on out of IIPR because their dividend growth, I'll just end with this, has been really, really spectacular. 67% over the last five years. And as of right now, as we saw, it is currently frozen. There should have been a dividend increase. But if you want to get that one, September 28th is when they go X. So enough of that. I got to get caught up in the comments. I'm chasing. I'm running. I'm running. So we'll go, jump right back in. Oh, look, you guys weren't, weren't throwing down in the comments. Uh, Dresh, good week for next star. I think they will buy ABC. I would like to see them. I've been looking into this a little bit. I would like to see them buy just the... Uh, stations and not necessarily the content. I know other people want to see them buy the co go after the content because then they can get reverse retrans fees. So then um, they can other company. So uh, cable companies and whatnot will come to them to buy the content to put on their channel. So it's kind of a reverse of how they normally do things, but I don't know if we need all that. What are they going to buy? Like uh was the bachelor on there? And I don't know. Just stick with the, um, I'd rather see them just buy the stations, local news, just, just kick it with that. Like they do, like they have been. I, I'm, <laughs> that was seven words trying to come out at once as I'm also choking on water a little bit. Um, I'm up to 75 shares of Nexstar. And down, I think like 163 bucks and change is my cost basis. So yeah, really nice bounce back. And um, hey, we'll see. We don't know what's going to happen. If I only had my chartist friend in here, the technical analyst to tell me what, what's going to happen with them. Oh, that's awful. Sorry. That was a little, <laughs> I'm done playing with the hat. Just screw it. We'll go without the hat. I don't care. You know, people just jumped in. They're like, what's the matter with this guy? All right. Shamir's still on the Uncrustables. You bought them for the first time. How were they? Were they, you know, were they every, well, oh, hope they, oh, you haven't tried them yet. Well, let us know, dude. Now I need to know. I've heard the Uncrustables uh, are pretty addicting. They're really good. Apparently they're laden with uh, a little bit of the, Cocaina, a crack, co I don't know how to say crack in Spanish, oddly enough. Beginning of the week, investing convo. Yeah, man, that's uh, oh, a big, <laughs> well, you could be loggering in too. He's logging in with, a I'll drink to that, man. Yeah, I like it, man. I like doing these little uh, 
you know, Sunday night communions, whatever we want to call it. Uh, that's mostly watered down ice there. You're welcome, man. And uh, thank you for swinging on by the channel. And uh, we're just, yeah, we have a little fun here. I mean, I think it's insane that there was just 62 of you in here and uh, 58 would just count down. But no, seriously, I, I do appreciate all you people. And if you want to watch passively, if you want to be a voyeur, cool. Or if you want to chat, ask a question like Steve did here and, or make a comment. Uh, Capital Mindset sold. Oh, who's Capital Mindset? Is that a YouTuber? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Construct ADC. Yeah. You know what, man? Honestly, I've thought about that. Like if I don't want to add any more, oh, what am I doing? Should I sell them? But it's in the retirement account, 150 shares, right around a little over $60 a share is my average. Um, I think I'm just going to let it ride. I think I'm good with that. Uh, I did think about maybe getting up to 200, but, you know, I, I think they're going to be okay. So nice forest moto adventures added again at 5426. I don't know that forest moto. Advent so you're a motorcycle. Okay. No, Forte said, let's do some new. I know I'm the worst Charles. I get, I, I, I get so distracted, you know, Yes, I only do drink on the days of the week that end in Y. I don't. I honestly, I don't. Can I play that guitar for you? I, it's it hasn't been to. And here's the dirty little secret: I play guitar almost every day, at least for five to ten minutes, just to play something. It relaxes me. But unfortunately, this this guy up here on the wall, I haven't played for. It might be years now. It's it's unfortunately kind of become a decoration. If my life depended on it, I could. But those strings are probably so freaking rusty for anybody that, hey, what's up, Rusty? For anybody that plays guitar would know that rusted strings will just shred your fingers. So uh, there you go. Thanks. Blackstone Ivy. I, I'm guessing this isn't my daughter, Ivy, but it's our other. My sec Ivy, you are my second favorite Ivy. I'll tell you, I'll give you have my word. Uh, there you go. So Blackstone is the private equity firm and BlackRock is the opposite. Gotcha. If T eliminated the dividend and the share price crash further, would I start loading up then? Oh man, it depends if they, um, it depends. It, dude, sorry. I, I saw your comment, Ryan. Let me answer you, Shamir. Yeah, if, uh, if T eliminated the dividend, Dude, they would get hit hard, hard, but that total return sucks. It's just awful. It's god awful. In the last ten years, I think they have a total return of almost zero. Awful. Just man, I don't. I want to move on, but again, I'm stubborn and I'm waiting to get back to like twenty bucks a share. Hey, a girl can dream, right? So that's what I'm waiting for. Yes, Ryan, I think a beggar, a better thing is uh, we could call it, well, you're not in the club, Black Cat. Uh, I did see a shirt once at a punk rock show where instead of the black flag bars, they have, so for those of you that don't know, they have four black bars and it was four black cats like standing on their hind legs. And I was like, yes, and it was called Black Black Cat, <laughs> Black Flag, yes. Uh, da, da, da. oh no, funny story about Black Stool, but um, uh, not appropriate for this show. But I will say, <clears throat> see if you can figure it out. Um, there was a situation that developed with Black Stool, and there was a lot of Guinness involved, and that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Uh, what are they doing? I'd love to know what they're doing to stop shoplifting, but yeah, I, I think that's more of like it's it's a problem to shrink um employees. I did read that Costco because they treat their employees better, go figure, and pay them a little bit more, have a little bit more benefits that their shrink, I think, is like something crazy, like 1% or 
or 1.7%, something like that. It was on the Acquired podcast. Oh, I do remember Black Flag Insect Killer. Is that still around? I remember the commercial. I forgot about that, man. Yeah, I like them. Um, they were never my favorite. I was more of a – so I'm more of like a bad religion, like melodies. Like I love melodies in my music, so I never got into like hardcore punk. This will just turn a bunch of you off. I'm not going to go on it, but all I'll say is like the hardcore stuff and like thrash metal, like I never really got into it because I like I like melodies. Um, Ivy's got IIPR there. What's up? Nice. Yeah. Uh, as Warren did indeed say, and I always laugh because everybody, people on social media use this. I swear to make themselves feel better. Uh, I saw it with MPW. People were on stock twits. If any of you haven't been on stock twits, it's a cesspool. It's like a bunch of children talking stocks, a bunch of juvenile kids talking stocks. Occasionally there's some interesting things, but a lot of people were using that, like, you know, MPW as they were crashing. They were like, be, be greedy when others are fearful. And I was like, yeah, you know, you could have used that when Enron was going down and Lehman Brothers and um, didn't work out. So you got to pick your spots when you're being greedy when others are fearful. So. I don't know ESS. ESS. What's ESS? Let me just look that up real quick. It sounds familiar. Who's ESS? Come on. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Work with me, Simply Safe. Work with me. ESS. I don't know ESS, man. Oh, Essex Property Trust. They have a dividend safety score of 93, man. That's... Um, that doesn't look too bad. I know you guys can't see this, but, uh, you know, I'll pop it on real quick. Real real quick for you, Trevon. Let me pop on ES because I've never really looked at them to the best of my knowledge. Let me see here. So there you go. Essex Property Trust safety score of 93. 4% yield, so pretty high above the five-year average. Uh, what are they – they develop multifamily residential properties on the West Coast. And they have ownership interest in 252 apartment communities, approximately comprising 62,000 apartment homes, huh. with some that are also in development. Yeah, look at their dividend growth. 5%, you know, not world beating, just average. Pretty pretty steady, Eddie. 28-year dividend growth streak, so... Um, Paying almost ten dollars per share per year, they were like two hundred twenty-two. Yeah, they look like they are at a interesting spot to buy. And since, uh, let's see, let me see their AFFO. Yeah, low AFFO payout ratio. They look pretty, pretty solid. Let me see their very interesting, and they are not diluting shareholders. They're not dumping more shares on the market to raise money to buy buy growth and to buy is expanding the business. No kidding. Let me see what they're um I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to go back out and then go back in because of the way I did that. I want to see their intrinsic value on um on uh alpha spread for ESS. Oh yeah I was looking up John there you go uh he he had a question about Kraft Heinz that's their intrinsic value, 43 bucks, about 24% undervalued, and $34 on the worst case. That's five years of, uh, I think, 5% negative growth, something like that. But let me just see ESS here. Essex Property Trust. you got to make me spell it out now. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Come on, baby. Overvalued. So according to this, you might want to wait. This is saying 216, so call it 215. I don't know if it'll get to 180. And let me see what the ownership, if anybody inside's been buying. Not really. There has only been one buy in December of 22. Total, though, 219 sales and 11 purchases. So one of the directors bought. Very interesting. Very interesting. I would definitely say that would get a, a, a deeper dig 
Where am I here? So, yeah. I don't know if anyone else is buying ESS. Let us know. That gets a raised eyebrow. The cart IPO. Oh, Instacart. Man, it's too risky. It's too risky, I think, to gamble with uh, with IPOs. That's just, um, there's the lockup period. I've, I've learned that I would wait until the, the lockup, the six-month lockup period is over. But that's just me, you know. Nice. Uh, Dresh, you've been buying some Dollar General. That's funny, man, because it's when we drive through those amber waves of grain and get back onto the road uh, through some farmer's field, th- it's crazy. There will be like a, a an intersection, farm field, gas station, farm field, and then on the other side is a Dollar General. And it's like that's the little downtown area. It's It's the wildest thing, man. There's just Dollar Generals everywhere. I think they have... I think there's more dollar generals than Walmarts. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. And if it's not, I just made it up. So if anyone wants to fact check that, might might not be bad. Arm, I think, was a little different. Uh, I know the Arm IPO this week. They had been public, then they were bought private, and then they went they were dumped out uh, public again. But what they do, they're like they design. They're like the architects for chips. Architects for chips and those circuits and things like that. So they have IP, uh, not IPO. What is it called? They have whatever they own. I can't think of patents. They have things like that going back to the nineties that they're still essentially receiving passive income from. So they're an interesting one though. So they're, they're designing the chips more than making the chips like NVIDIA does, I guess. Charles's kids on loves them. Why the John C. Stennis poster on the wall? Well, James, I served aboard the USS John C. Stennis. That was my home for three years, buddy. So yeah, I was uh, I was on board them from uh, 1997 to 1999. <laughs> In the middle of Virginia, there's a Dollar General store about every 10 miles on the main road. Yeah, they're crazy, man. They're they are everywhere. Oh, look at that. Yeah, right? God. We'll drink to the new metal. And that's why I never liked new metal. No melodies. Gotta have melody. Gotta. That's me, though. That's my thought. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, the Sequoia National Forest. That's interesting. That's somewhere I'd like to go someday. Shout out to the Sequoias. I hope they're still standing when I'm there. They've only been around for, what, Hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, dividend happy hour. I sh- <laughs> I don't know if Ryan's still on. I should have just did that. Just dividend happy hour. Just blatant ripped it off. Actually, uh, too, I spoiled it. That he would have got it. I would have changed it later, but just just took one of his thumbnails and just called it the dividend happy hour. Just put my face instead of his. Just cut him out of there. Or not not even that. I would have done it poorly. Like I would have just put my face over his, but so you could still see some of his, just make it the most. Anyway. All right. Um, what is a good Caleb? Do, uh, what is a good dividend yield these days? Love Apple. Yeah. that It's a small yield, but it takes time for, for Apple. Div, they have high dividend growth. Uh, if you're young, could be worth it. And my opinion on like the yield max ones, so uh, Jeppy and JEPQ are a little different. They're run by JP Morgan, reputable firm. I don't really know much about Yield Max. I think they're newer, but like TSLY, you know, those yields are coming from somewhere. That 50% yield is, <laughs> that's nuts. And from what I can tell, I looked in their prospectus and they say outright everywhere that the yield is coming from, including uh Potential return, uh, re- potential return of investor capital, and you got teenagers singing. I don't know what they're doing up there. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my mind here. They're singing uh, the uh, Star Spangled Banner. And I'm choking too. <clears throat> I'm choking on my pride. But what was I saying? Oh, return of investor capital. 
that's a bad thing because that will bring down the net asset value per share. That will bring down the share price. And I think that's, I don't know how much, but I think part of that 50% yield has investor capital. They're just giving your money back to you, which is defeating the purpose of a big yield. So I think that is why the share price is consistently keeps going down. But it's a little confusing because when you look at total return, um, it's still up there. So, you know, I could be wrong. I'm staying away from them. I did think of putting one into the Roth just to see what happened, but I decided not to. I decided not to. I do apologize if I skip over you guys. Uh, lengthy article on Twinkies and the history of it. Yeah, that's oh, that's right. They've had. Ooh, I had a freaking fly go. <laughs> What's going on? I had a fly try and go in my ear. I might have to watch that one, you know, get some uh, instant replay going. It's nutty, dude. You never know what's going to happen. We're live without a net here, you know. Oh, good. See, this is why I like hearing from you guys. I mean, I don't know everything, obviously, you know, take a guess, but uh, – Petrobras has been nationalized for decades and Brazil will likely be insulate. So does the government own the whole thing or is it just a big chunk of it? I thought it was like had a majority stake. I don't know. It could be Brazil likely be insulated from the Ukraine war. Well, yeah, I don't I still think, I still think there's some risk there and maybe I just, Either I don't fully understand it, or I'm not unco- or I'm not comfortable with it, or both. Oh boy, you don't. We all, Dresh. If we start talking punk, all I'll say is my oldest daughter is named Ivy. So yeah, as soon as we go punk talk, you just watch the the viewers, the, and it'll just drop, drop, and drop. That's the best way to clear the dance floor, right? Uh, like there was floor fillers. And then there was floor killers when you're in a dance club. That would be a floor killer. So, but I would like to. Uh, let's see. Oh no, uh, dude. I'm. Thank you. I appreciate for saying I'm a good looking dude. But my wife was just saying like, you know, we should start taping our f- foreheads because she's like that line is getting deeper. I'm putting the hat back on. My my now my hair is drying out, and we'll we'll finish it with the durst. The dividend durst. All right, I want to get. I'm I'm getting caught up to you guys here. Yeah, I cut their dividend. A dividend cut can be a very good thing for a business that's struggling because instead of, you know, if they got high debt like MPW does and they got a lot of problems, just having that extra cash can be a benefit to the business in the long run. Short-minded, short, short-sighted investors will sell and move on. Let them do that. But if you have faith in the management team and you think that this is what they need then it could be fantastic for the business going going forward. Uh, KHC's dividend's flat. Yeah, it's flat or frozen. Flattish like a radish. It's frozen like the pizzas that they sell. What pizzas does Kraft Heinz own? I know they own a pizza. That's a good one. I don't know. I don't know if PepsiCo acquired some shares of Instacart. I know they obviously have Celsius, but... Uh, now if you got me thinking, I think I may have read that. I think you're right. I think they do have some shares of Instacart. Good one. I don't, I, I guess if anybody knows for certain, uh, I have not been buying Ken view. Let's see where we go. $18,000 generals in the U S man, Mexico. Nice. The, Simply safe, uh, I will tell you, on Dino. Isn't that Sinclair? You know how I remember that one? Because every time you see a Sinclair gas, they have that dinosaur out front. And come on, you're so so gum. I'm trying to get this. So, Dino, come on. Come on. We may have to come back to this one, Steve. My computer's... I don't know. We got gremlins, ghosts in the machine. I'll uh, let me refresh the page. Stand by, everybody, as I I wish I had some music to play. Here we go. All right, HF Sinclair dividend safety score of sixty. 
So borderline safe on Sinclair. That's what you got. That awesome about the stemmas. <laughs> the stemmas. Yeah, I was uh I worked on weapons elevators. That's where I learned to start welding from the shipyard workers that were not supposed to be. I was supposed to be on Firewatch and they were showing me how to weld. So, you know, different time back in the mid-90s. Uh, you could get away with a few more things, I guess. But you know, they're like, hey, you know, Booter, they called him. He's like, uh, the shipyard workers were civilians, and most of them were guys that had been in the Navy. They like, come over here and try to weld this, and then they would laugh at how bad the welds were. So, uh, let's see. Is the seventh Nimitz class nuclear powered aircraft carrier in his name? Yeah, the problem with uh, John Stennis is they called him the father of the, the Navy, but he was a racist, dude. He had some really, uh, and there was some talk about them changing the just google it john john c stennis racist so it's i and it is it does stink because i i've i don't have a racist bone on my body so but this is the boat i was on and that is the name so you know uh oh yeah there you go so i was right look at i didn't just make up things so there are an insane amount of dollar generals everywhere you don't bother with the covered call ETFs. The only one I'm in is DIVO. And the reason I picked Devo, <laughs> da -da 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 -da, you must whip it, <laughs> whip it good. Uh, the only reason I picked Devo, aside from them having some actually really good songs other than their one hit, one, one hit wonder, like Girl You Want, uh, Freedom of Choice, just good stuff from Devo. But the reason I picked them uh, is because they're selling covered calls on the positions they hold. They hold like PepsiCo, I think Procter & Gamble, a lot of the big blue chips that I want to be invested in. So I like that one, but I, I don't do any of the other covered call ETFs. <laughs> there you go. Got more of that. Da, 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 da. Oh, my God. Where's a Fez? No, I hope another week. You know what it is? I'm going to have to use the pomade. Uh, I had like condition. I have this conditioning cream that sometimes works when your hair is long, but with it being short, it's just this turned into, <laughs> into a mess. KHC. Yeah, that one's a super interesting one. I've thought about them in the past. But just before all the regularities, yeah, they're um, – well, let's see. Let's see what Simply Safe gives them. I'll do that for you, John, and for everybody that's watching. We will come along to the "Come with me, you will see" to the land of Simply Safe dividends, where we're going to look at what are we looking at? Look at that spinning blue thing. Come on, that looks awful. Thank you. Um. Oh my goodness. Don't tell me. I'm going to get it. Oh, uh, Kraft Heinz. It's a Sunday night, everybody. Daddy's almost done. And then after I'm done with this, my wife and I are going to watch some TV and have a little bit more whiskey before Betty Bye. <laughs> so this is the Kraft Heinz dividend safety score of 50, borderline safe. Dude, that yields four and three quarter percent. Uh, let's see what's going on. Yucky. <laughs> That's not a very good chart that you don't want to see that the cut i think that's when they sold right when they were i don't remember what happened they were bought like the the buffett and the 3g and i think he was part of them cutting the dividend and then they started paying and then they cut and yuck yeah when you have a zero percent 20 year growth rate and negative eight percent yeah now now the dividend is flat what pizza do they own i wonder if it says it in here uh here we go here we go, everybody. Where is it? I, I know they own a pizza. Oscar Mayer, Kool-Aid. Oh, they own kool -Aid. Oh, should have worn a Jello Man shirt. I don't see it on here, but I'm pretty sure they own oh, they own Velveeta. All right. Well, I guess it was going to say what, uh, I don't know. If, I guess not. Anyway, um, let me see their, their payout ratio. Yeah, like, this is a frozen dividend, everybody. Just frozen as frozen can be which I guess, you know, could be good. 32 bucks. They don't move a lot between 32 and 42. But 
there's the yuckiness. Sorry, don't get sick. Free cash flow payout ratio. Problems. They've had problems. Yuck. 126%. Yeah, I don't. I'd stay away. And I don't even know what their shares situation looks like. Earnings per share, just flat. Free cash flow per share is all over the place. <laughs> Sales growth is all over. It looks like the the teeth on a pump a uh, pump a lumpkin jack o' lantern. But what's a pump a lumpkin? I don't know. But I hope it's not in my closet. Now I gotta sleep with the doors open and the lights on. All right. Um, here shares outstanding. A little bit of dilution, not a lot, just a itty bitty tiny bit, and just flat sales. This is not uh, really bad margins. Seven percent Roik. Oh, awful. Operating margins okay, but net debt's low. I don't know. They look they look yucky. I'd stay away. <laughs> not for me, you know. I'd rather just stick with my uh, my. Uh oh, what did I do? Where am I? Oh, there I am. Anyway, oh my God. Uh, I don't know. It's all starting to come apart, everybody. Hey, I like these ones, man. You keep me. Uh, one of Uncle Warren's worst investments. I don't think it's any worse than Dexter Shoes. That was probably his worst ever. Was Dexter Shoes? Berkshire Hathaway was an awful investment for uh, for the old buff, but he turned it into something that he never expected. But my thoughts on W Bay and MPW, uh, I'm staying away. <laughs> I don't know what all that is. Face purple, wide eyes, face orange. I don't know. Uh, I'm staying away from both of those. Steering clear. And that's right, dude. Thank you. That. Mondelez was spun out of Kraft. You are right. There it is. Kraft's dividend is more frozen than a tombstone frozen pizza. And I'm sure I'm missing another joke there with their dividend being frozen and pizza and tombstone. I'm sure there's a tombstone joke there. Um, what? Oh, they're launched. Oh, yeah, that could be. Good prison pizza. <laughs> Case is, yes, it's a flat frozen. KHC's dividend is the flat frozen pizza you were looking for. Yeah, so if you like flat frozen things, then Kraft Heinz's dividend may be right for you. And no, you know what? Uh, where did it go? Uh, I have to figure out how to extract myself from MPW. Uh, give it time, man. It's it's your risk tolerance. I'm sure they're going to have better days ahead. Uh, they might have a short squeeze run, you know, or you just take it as a, lear a learning lesson if it's not going to destroy you. But, hey, they're still paying a dividend, right? So at least you can get paid to wait. So there might be something like that. Journeyman, EPD is good. I would like to buy them under 25 if they will ever get there. And the last one here, yes, DiGiorno. And I was going to say, I know that because uh, we do contracting work for a place in Schaumburg, Illinois. You can look them up called Nation Pizza and they're owned by Nestle and they do DiGiorno pizza and all the stuff. I get to see all the people making the pizzas over there. So, well, everybody, we made it. We're looking forward to another week in the market. And I don't know, I this may be the week that I decide to sell Albertsons and Put it into Kroger. Hey, you, the 52 of you watching, if I do do that, and you see a video sometime later in the week being, you know, I just sold this dividend stock like, <laughs> like real big. That's probably what it is, you know. Hey, sometimes it's the game. What do they say? Don't hate the player. Hate the game. It's the YouTube game that I'm learning to play because I'm a welder with a family and, you know, having fun here. So, um you know what, man? I don't know if it does finish up or down by the end of the week, but I know that my dividends, unless something bizarre happens, my dividend income, even if I buy one more thing or there's an increase, is going to be a little bit higher at the start of the week, if not completely exactly flat. So, yeah. And by the way, for those of you that may be new and watching, uh, I'm a kid of the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s. And I used to love looking forward to Pee Wee Herman's 
Pee Wee Herman to Pee Wee's Playhouse every Saturday. And I enjoyed watching it and I just love the ending music. So nobody from YouTube has said anything yet. It's still letting me play it. So I always end the show with, uh, with the ending credits from Pee Wee. So everybody, the 53 of you still watching, uh, click the link below, check out that visual capitalist article. Well, you can't click it. Can you, you have to copy and paste it. I don't remember either way. So I love you guys. Thank you for stopping by once again, one day this hair situation will be sorted out. But for now, enjoy a little bit of Pee Wee, and I will see you guys in the next one. So long, everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>